Now via Skype, Johnny Hendricks is here. Hey, Johnny, how are you? Doing great. How are you doing today? I'm doing quite well. Uh, uh, Johnny, where do you join us from? Where are you right now? I'm from Texas. I'm no, in no, no. Texas right now. Um, that's the that's the beautiful part of now I'm not doing MMA. I get to do boxing. Texas is a big state for boxing, and uh, I'm able to get a lot of good partners. Okay, so let's talk about this. Why did you retire from MMA? <clears throat> well, one of the reasons was because uh, I think we saw it as a great thing for the athletes because it, it's making people be clean, right? You know, I, I took 26 tests, never failed one of them. But in so that was in two years. I took 26 tests, never failed one of them. But what hurts, what hurts, the MMA aspect of it is that you can't IV back. So I'm a bigger welterweight. I walk around at 210. I've done that since I was 19 years old, walk around at 210. Um, and whenever the IV always brought me back, you know, it helped me get back to life, it helped me get back to where um, I didn't feel like I cut weight. Um, and once USADA came into the play, you had to walk around. I'd had to start walking around like 190 at best. And uh, as you can tell, I, I do carry a lot of weight. Uh, so, you know, I have a family. I love being with them. And that's sort of one reason why uh, it sort of it just made it that much harder to make weight at 170. So, but why not stay in MMA and then just do 185 in MMA? I know you did it a little bit there, but I guess the question is why leave MMA altogether? Well, because, it, because it, you know, any of the best, okay, I'm just not in the sport to just be in a sport. Does that make sense? I can do other things. Uh, if I'm going to do it, I want to be the best. And I know welterweight is my, that's, that's where I should be. Now, if they got, you know, like I like that, like I said, I love the fact of USADA. I like that you do the random drug testing. I, I just wish that they have a lot of people that show up at these meets. If you want to do an IV, have them test you every day. I'm perfectly fine with that. You know I mean, you show up on Monday, you get tested. Tuesday, you get tested. Wednesday, you get tested. Thursday, if you have any P left, you can you can get tested on Thursday. And then they 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 let they they're there testing the IV bags. They're doing everything uh, like that. And I think you can bring back IVs because I think there's a lot of people that really used the IVs to help them fight better. Um, and once you took that away, you started seeing some of these guys, they either had to move up or they stayed at their normal weight and they didn't perform like they used to. How much uh, better did you feel using the IVs? Is there any way to let the audience like in on that? Can you describe how much better it was for you? <clears throat> Excuse me. I always told, you know, I tell everybody, go run 26 miles, take an IV. The next day, you're going to be sore, but guess what? You, you feel like you could run again. Um, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. Like, uh, you know, we always got vitamin, all the vitamins. Did all the minerals that you're pulling from your body, um, uh, irons and stuff like that, that your body really needs to compete at a, at a high level. Definitely, whenever you're fighting the UFC, you need those. You need those back in your muscles, and that's you know, like a perfect example. Without them, I think I was fighting at maybe fifty percent. Hmm. With them, I was fighting right around 90% because my body was able to recover after that hard weight cut. Is there any way to assess maybe what kind of damage you've done from the weight cuts? I talked to Chris Lieben one time, and he told me the weight cuts just really <laughs> butchered him. I know, by the way, he's competing on the same card as you. Well, you know what? Uh, so after the last time I fought 170, my kidneys shut down. I bloomed up, so I walked. Let's see here. I fought on Saturday. On Sunday night, I got home. I was 219. And I blew up like a balloon. And my doctor was like, hey, you need to go to the hospital. I was like, I know exactly what's going on. My kidney shut down. And I guess it, it went on for about four or five days. On Thursday, they rebooted. And whenever that happened, I went from 219 to 199 in like 24 hours. Oh my God. 
and I didn't work out or nothing. And then that's whenever I was like, you know what, I'm going to kill myself if I, you know, with IVs, and that's the thing is with IVs, the the damage that you do by cutting weight, it, it helps it helps you not kill yourself, you know, because like I said, all that stuff that's important to your body, you can't get it back in 36 hours. You know, you can't get it back in 48 hours. Um, but with an IV, it goes straight into your veins. It goes straight into your muscles, in your organs, and it sends exactly where it needs to uh, for you to recover the best it can. That's why in oh, every sport, what do they do? In every sport, if you're hurting or you're this or you're that, they give you IVs. They're, they're, they're a huge part. And, you know, I remember back in the day, <clears throat> you know, I like to take them on Wednesdays. I'd take like a half a bag on Wednesday. Uh, just so that way it'd keep me from getting sick. It kept me from, uh, you know, it, it helped me where I could train harder on that. When, uh, like, so on Wednesday, I would start fading on my training and then I would take an IV bag in the middle of the day. I could train hard on Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday. And it was like, it was like a brand new me. Let me uh, play devil's advocate if I may, Johnny. And I'm sure you've heard these. We've talked about this before on my radio show, but some <laughs> folks, they're going to point to the fact that once USADA came around, your performance at MMA kind of dropped off. It sounds like you're attributing that to the lack of the IVs, but of course the speculation is going to be that there was previously, theoretically speaking anyway, drug use that had to go steroid. away. To yeah, you say steroid. what? Yeah, yeah, steroid. You know what? Here's the thing. Guess what? Those people are idiots. Okay? So even at me at 85, so did I change at 185? Did I look bigger? Did I look stronger at 185? Or did I have the exact same body at 170? Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, okay, so if I'm taking steroids, if I'm taking steroids, uh, you would think that, okay, I'm going 185. I was, I would have abs. You know, I would, I would, I would, I would look bigger. Um, just because I was stronger than everybody else is because I work, I work for a living. You know, when at age 12. I was out bailing hay. I was building fences. I was digging trenches. I, I I did irrigation for summers. You know, like I've been working all my life. And you also got to consider that I've wrestled since I was five years old. You know what I mean? Like that's one of the hardest sports in the in the world. And here you are. You're wrestling all your life. You're doing this. You're doing that. <clears throat> and I've always told everybody, if I need steroids to win. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna kill myself so I can so I can win a bout and die at age fifty, you know, or sixty. I want to live a life. I, you know, I have I have four kids now, and a wife that I got to take care of. They're more important than one bout. I'll, I'll I'll just say this: steroids has never been in my body. Any type of performance enhancement like that has never been, and that's why you know. Here's I'll, I'll tell you this. I've been out of for what, eight, ten months now. Mm -hmm. Anybody wants to test me? Anybody wants to test me? I'll do it in a heartbeat, and I'll always continue to. I'll, I'll say that until the day I die. <clears throat> I don't. I'm not worried about getting failing a drug test because there's nothing in my body unless you know. Like I always said, unless Copenhagen and energy drinks are going to make me fail a drug test, <laughs> I, I'm not going to fail one. So. Um, I, you know, I just look at it as, and you know, and what sucks is that you fought these guys that I fight, they're going, he's too strong not to be on steroids. And you're going, okay, just because God blessed me with more strength than you doesn't mean that I have to take a, uh, you know, a type of steroid to, to win. That's, that's just not me. Are you a long cut Copenhagen kind of guy? Yes, I used to do fine cut, but cutting down to 170, man, you would your mouth gets so dry that you couldn't spit it all out. Yeah, and you'd be walking around with you know half the dip still in there. So I switched to uh, switch switched to long cut, and then the week of the weigh-ins, I would go to uh, pouches. The old bandits. <laughs> Well, I, they're, they're Copenhagen pouches. Yes, they're like yeah. bandits, yes, yeah. but I would still stick with Copenhagen. I was always a long cut guy because the short cut or the fine cut, it gets in between your teeth and there's just no way to get it out unless you carry a toothbrush with you at all times. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that or a toothpick. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like you yeah. got 
That, or, hey, you know what? I'll tell you this. The best thing that I found out was gum. You chew a piece of gum after you dip fine cut, and yeah. then you throw out the gum, and it picks it all out from your teeth. Uh, well, you know what? It's I don't dip anymore, but it is an, a good life hack. L let's talk a little bit more about MMA if we can, Johnny, because the question would be, well, okay, yeah. it didn't work out for you in UFC at the very end there, but, of course, you had a nice run in the early to middle parts. But why not go to Bellator? In fact, Bellator this weekend has their own welterweight tourney. They can make a claim that maybe they've got the best welterweights, many of the best welterweights, certainly in their division. You can use the IV there conceivably. Why not continue your career there? Was that, was that a possibility for you? It was, but then again, you know, um, <clears throat> I don't know. You know, I, I just got to a point where it, it, sometimes it wasn't – it's it's who you – how much you're going to talk to get something, you know, you know, are you going to be, how much, how, how, how bad does the press want to follow you? How, how much are you going to talk trash about this guy, this guy, this guy to get the fight? Um, and, and really, you know, for me, I've always been the guy that talking trash is easy. Uh, but for me, I just, I just, Wanted to try something, you know, realistically, I wanted to try out boxing for a little bit. And uh, whenever the Bare Knuckle TV, they came after, they they talked to me, I was pretty excited because I want to see how my hands are. You know, I've, I've been wanting to find out for a while um, how good is my striking. Um, because I've gone with some very, very talented boxers here in uh, Texas. And uh, it's just, it's just been a dream of mine. I've been a huge boxing fan, uh, all my life. I grew up watching Tyson. I grew up watching, uh, you know, the, the old classics. Um, and that's sort of where my next crew led me. Uh -huh. oh, I want to talk about that in just a second. One last question about MMA, if I may, do you, how do you feel about the sport? Do you still like it? Do you still love <laughs> it? Do you plan on being a fan? Do you plan on being totally distant. How do you think MMA will affect your life going forward? I'm coaching. I'm coaching. I got six fighters right now. They're all amateur. I'm working with them. Um, and that's pretty much what I, that's my, you know, not only my coaching wrestling at a high school, but I'm also coaching, uh, six fighters. And, uh, you know, I'm probably, I would like to get to like 10 fighters where I'm coaching them all the time. Uh, so I'll always be a fan of the sport. Okay. I just don't want to sit there and watch the back and forth. Does that make sense? I, mm -hmm. I, I care about the fights. That's what I care about. So whenever, you know, Saturday nights, Friday nights, the local shows, Saturday nights, the big shows, that's what I care about. What's your fondest UFC memory? <clears throat> you know what? Um, my fondest UFC moment was probably my very first one. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, you're walking in there and you, you, you sort of see, <clears throat> and, and you know, you're in the best league, you know, you're doing this, you know, you're doing that. And you, 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 you look around and everybody's there. They, they can't wait for the excitement of the fight, you know, and you, you, you step into the octagon, you're looking across and whenever you see that guy and you're, and you're just like, man, and this is it. I have to, I have to perform now. Like that, that first fight was the pressure was so high that it was hard to compete against it for, for the rest of my career. Um, because you know, you, you got your shot. Do you, if you lose, you're most likely out. You win, you get to keep fighting, and 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 that was that was sort of my defining moment for me. Of when you when you, as soon as they said fight, everything went away. It was weird, like nerves, everything. It just it just slowed down, and whenever it slowed down, <clears throat> the next thing you know, you're knocking them out. You're going, wow, that I need to do that more. Let's talk about your fight now. As I mentioned, November 9th, this will be WBK FF1 Rise of the Titans, and you're taking on Brennan Ward. Brennan Ward, a welterweight out of Bellator, something of a relatively similar position to you in terms of the end of his MMA career, now the beginning of his bare knuckle one, a very, very scrappy competitor. What do you know about him and what do you expect? 
You know, I don't, I don't know a whole lot of him. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do some, you know, these next couple of weeks is really what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start focusing, getting a game plan together. Um, I know that he is like you said on his tail end, just like I am, um, or I was, uh, he's also, you know, he's going to, I think what's going to happen is he's going to be looking to land that right hand, just as I'm looking to land my left hand. The only difference is that with bare knuckle, you can't throw as hard as you want to. It's about accuracy. And that's what, that's what really makes me excited about this because I am a very accurate puncher. You know what I mean? My accuracy is very well whenever it comes to seeing where the punch lands, where it needs to land, and sort of what comes next. Um, and with my partner, or with my Tony Cavello, this is what he's done forever. You know, he, he grew up boxing. He's a boxing coach. Now it's about sort of getting it done and moving forward. I hear the little one in the back. I won't keep it too much longer, Johnny. Just wanted to know... <laughs> No, are you you're hoping? Fine. Are you? I know you're hoping to win because why else would you competing if you didn't want to win? But more than that, <laughs> are you looking to score a knockout? Which I know every fighter is, but I mean it in this sense. Given that there were so many questions about the disappearance of your knockout power in the the latter, latter stage of your UFC career, you know what? The reason why it, my knockout uh, power left is all right. So <clears throat> if you if you're sitting here doing this and this and this, and you're knocking everybody out, right? Let's say you're knocking everybody out. What are they going to start worrying about? Are they going to oh. worry about my wrestling? Or are they going to worry about my left hand? You're right. So everybody I started fighting, <clears throat> they would circle to their right, and that would stay away from my left hand. But with MMA, you can't just charge in there because they're four ounce gloves. You got to worry about knees. You got to worry about kicks. There's a lot. It plays into that factor where boxing, boxing, you can still, you can, I can still use my power. And also with that being said is that nowadays <clears throat> there's so much footage every, you know, and, and you also got to think, all right, Robbie used to knock people out. He doesn't do it anymore. Does that make sense? Once you hit it, there's a, there's a certain point where you hit hard competition day in and day out. You you can't win everyone by knockout. And I think that's what sort of pushed me, like sort of hurt me in my sense is that I didn't fall back on my wrestling. If I'd have fell back on my wrestling after I knocked out a couple of people and the next one didn't happen, and the next one didn't happen. If I'd have fell back to my wrestling, started making people fear my wrestling again, I think my knockouts would have been back um, because then they they would be like, oh, well, he might take me down. Or he can knock me out. Which one would I rather get done? Would I rather get knocked out on the ground? Or would I rather, would I rather get knocked out on my feet? And I didn't play it that way. Uh, I should have. And But that's something that I'm also teaching my guys right now. Is don't fall into, if you get a knockout, don't fall into that. Keep, keep, keep every tool at your disposal, right? And, and, and that's really what I should have done. Last question before we let you go. What is your plan for bare knuckle boxing? How long do you think you'll do it? <clears throat> Man, you know what? Uh, I think I, I have a feeling I can do it for a while. You know, uh, my first my first coach ever in MMA, he was a bare knuckle uh, world champ in Thailand. Who's that? Okay. Um, so uh, it was, uh, oh man, what's his name? Oh, if you wouldn't have asked me, I'd have been able to say that. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, I can see his face, and uh, he was he was with Striking Unlimited. Okay. Out there in Vegas. Okay. Uh, that he's the coach for Striking Unlimited. Um, and Ken Han. Ken Han. There we go. Ah, okay. Ken Han. <clears throat> and so. I, he showed me a lot of techniques, how to strengthen your hand and all that kind of stuff. Um, also how, how you can actually punish the body and the, where to hit on the arms, this, this, what to look for. So I'm sort of going back to that stage as well. You know, where to hit on the arm, how to make sure that like, you know, after the first round, let's say it goes past the first round that he can't no longer, he can no longer use his right arm. 
you know, because it hurts too bad, uh, or his left arm, because I, I, I keep punishing it the way that I, I the, some of the game plans that I have in my head already, uh, <clears throat> those can, those things can help. Fair enough. Well, as I mentioned before, November 9th, WBK FF1 Rise of the Titans. This will be live on pay-per-view as well as Fight TV. It's going to have Johnny Hendricks versus Brendan Ward, Sean Merriman, the former NFL player, versus Mike Bork, Chris Lieben versus Phil Baroni, a $100,000 lightweight tournament, and a whole lot more. Johnny, always appreciate your time and your candor, and wish you the best of luck on uh, November 9th. Thank you.